Hello everyone, this is Alfadi and I'd like to welcome you to a brand new video series that uh, we will be doing on the Trinity from the Old Testament. And I know the Trinity, of course, is one of those complex doctrines that unfortunately even Christians struggle uh, with explaining or sometimes even understanding. However, it is a biblical doctrine. Uh, just the fact that the word itself doesn't exist in the Bible does not in any way negate the fact that it is a biblical doctrine. And of course, with me here in studio, no better than my dear brother, Anthony Rogers. Anthony, welcome, brother. Thank, Thank you, Thank you brother. so much for taking the time to be here with us. And uh, I am so blessed, of course, to have Anthony, because uh, if you know anything about Anthony, you would have noticed that Anthony's passion is to talk about topics like this. But uh, brother, before we even start discussing this deep theological topic, which I appreciate you taking the time to uh, be here with us to, uh, to do so, uh, just tell our audience just briefly in a couple of minutes something about your background, uh, especially those that maybe have never heard of you before. And if you have a, uh, a channel, a website or anything like that, feel free to also introduce it to our people. Yeah, as you said, my name's Anthony Rogers. I studied uh, Christian philosophy at Christ College in Lynchburg, Virginia, and then went on to receive a divinity degree from Greenville Presbyterian Theological Seminary. From there, I was ordained and currently serve as the regional director for prison ministries in South Carolina. So a lot of my activity is spent reaching out to prisoners with the gospel, hoping to uh, convince and convert prisoners and, and see them released into society and, and uh, serving Christ. Uh, I've also worked for many years uh, engaging Muslims uh, with the gospel of Christ as well as other groups. In that capacity, I've worked with you in, in one way or another for, for many years. Uh, we, we've both been authors for Answering Islam. I think you've been there longer than I have, but uh, I know I've been writing for Answering Islam for at least 10 years. Uh, I also do uh, work with David Wood, mm -hmm. uh, producing video content for Act 17 Apologetics, uh, where also I engage in formal debates. I've done that in other uh, venues as well. Uh, I also have written for a number of uh, theological journals and books. Most recently, I, I contributed to a book called Our God is Triune, which is very relevant to our topic. Uh, that's right, yeah. Uh, so uh, that's a little bit about me. There, there's. Hopefully some more to say. I have a wife and uh, four children. Uh, yeah. And Thank you so much. Now, Anthony, um, why is this topic uh, old, uh, I mean the Trinity in general, but also the Trinity from the Old Testament, uh, such an important you know, topic for us to even dedicate a video series for? Right. So as you, as you mentioned, it's a biblical doctrine. That already makes it something that we should seek to know something about. Uh, but it's also uh, a cardinal doctrine. It's, a, it's about God. There's nothing more fundamental to the Christian faith than what it tells us about God. That's the foundation of uh, all our worship. Right. It's the object of our faith. Uh, it also undergirds the gospel. There's no gospel apart from the Trinity. Remember, our uh, belief in the gospel involves a belief in God the Father so loving the world that he gave his only begotten Son and then, of course, through the Son, the Spirit is poured into our hearts, whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. So Amen. the Trinity is uh, is essential to the gospel. If we would understand the gospel right, we must understand God aright. Which means, I mean, based on what you're saying, uh, without really the, 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 the existence of the Trinity, as we know it, as God himself, by his grace, revealed it to us, it will be really hard for us to understand how can God do what he did for us. And, and, you know, really, it's the fundamental uh, question Muslims, as a, a form of Muslim, you know, they always say, well, well, how can God die? And, and if he died, how can he rule the universe? That's a fundamental, you know, basically a question that lacks understanding of the Trinity, because through the Trinity, it is possible. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so the, the reason uh, the Trinity in the Old Testament in particular is important, as you know, as a former Muslim, you probably had these objections. I know you've heard them since becoming a Christian, for sure. Uh, but one of the things that Muslims will often say is the doctrine of the Trinity didn't come along until the fourth century. Muslims aren't alone in, in making this claim, but they certainly like it and they use it. That's right. And so they'll say that it's a product of 
the fourth century, it crept into Christianity from other places, either Gentile pagan sources or Greek philosophical sources. And this uh, you know, makes it difficult then to show it to them in the Bible because they're insisting that it, it's not found in the Bible. And then when they find it in the Bible, they'll typically do something like, uh, they'll say, well, then it was invented by Paul, right? Right, exactly. Paul is the if, guy to... If plan A fails, yeah. uh, move to plan B. <laughs> right. But, but usually what happens here is you show people stuff in the New Testament and they'll say, the, the authors of the New Testament were Jews, so they were monotheists, and in the mind of Muslims and others, monotheist means Unitarian, that God is one person. That's right. But monotheism isn't exclusively, you know, you can use the term monotheism to refer to that, but all monotheism means is one God, and it doesn't tell us whether the one God is unipersonal or tripersonal, as in uh, Christianity. And so what, what people often will do is they'll say, the Jews didn't believe in a triune God. So when we look at the New Testament, either we have to say that their writings must be understood within that framework, we must force anything that doesn't look like it's Unitarian to mean that, or the New Testament authors are departing from the Old Testament. And so the, the importance of this, I think, is that it, it shows what is the, the background to the writings of the apostles, and it shows that the, the apostles are not innovating. When they, when they introduce the fact that the Messiah is a divine person and, and that the Spirit is a divine person, they're not making up a new doctrine. This is how God has revealed himself from the beginning. And we should be approaching their writings recognizing that this is the background. We shouldn't That's be right. assuming that it has to be Unitarian. So, you know, what you're saying is the New Testament authors affirmed what already was there. Exactly. And we can, we can really add and say by the power of the Holy Spirit, they were even more enlightened now to understand things that might have been a little bit obscure for them, you know. I mean, the, the, the prophecies and everything else we're going to talk about, for instance, in passages, come from the Old Testament that the, these Jewish followers of Jesus uh, uh, were familiar with, maybe even memorized some of these Psalms, and, and they probably wrestled with what, what does it exactly mean. However, at the end of the day, they appreciated the fact that now they know in, in Christ what all of that meant. Right. So, you know, is there any maybe given passage uh, that we can, you know, uh, kick this series off with? You know, I know you mentioned Isaiah 48 and Isaiah 44, yeah, sure. and we have probably one of them right here in front yeah, of let's... us. So, for instance, people can see right now Isaiah 48, 12, and 16. Tell us a little bit more about this. Yeah, so in this passage, uh, if you follow closely, you'll notice that it speaks of three persons, and each person... Uh, is involved with the other in such a way as uh, to make it apparent that we're, we're looking here not just at uh, creatures, we're, we're in fact looking at three divine persons, right? It says, listen to me, listen to me, O Jacob, even Israel whom I called, I am he, I am the first, I am also the last. So the speaker here is God himself. That's a divine title. We'll see that in the next slide. And, and right here, this is the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I am the first, I am also the last. Of course, that's a, a title for God. Mm -hmm. uh, it's used numerous times in Scripture. It's used in the New Testament, in fact, numerous times. And even for our Muslim listeners, they'll recognize this is a title that uh, Allah uh, arrogates to himself. He's not really the first and the last, but he recognizes, or the author of the Quran recognizes this is a way of referring to God. So the, the speaker here is God, but notice how the speaker goes on uh, to talk. Come near to me, listen to this, from the first I have not spoken in secret, from the time it took place I was there, and now the Lord God has sent me and his spirit. And notice there is member number one, member number two who is speaking, and member number three, the three distinct persons that you're referring to. Exactly. And so you have the Lord God, you have me, who's the first and the last, and then you have his spirit. So the me here, just to let people know, the first and the last, this is Jesus himself speaking. Right, right. We, and we, we see that uh, as we move through Scripture. But at this point, we at least know that we have three persons that are involved in uh, in some way. I mean, there's, there's much more to, to be said about what Isaiah is talking about here in this context. And of course, Isaiah is not speaking in a vacuum. There's, there's a lot more mm -hmm. uh, surrounding what Isaiah is talking about. 
Uh, but it's, it's clear that the prophet is not unfamiliar with this idea of plurality within the Godhead. Right. And right. so, in fact, just to confirm this, if you go to the next slide, uh, you'll see that very clearly the first and the last is ident identified as God. It says in Isaiah 44, 6, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and there is no God besides me. And then it goes on, you know, who is like me. That's right. Uh, so uh, very clearly, without question, the first and the last is a divine title, and he speaks of being sent by the Lord God and being sent together with his spirit. Correct, correct. And, and you know, the title Redeemer, for instance, here, and uh, I'm going to use a different color, you know, it applies to our Lord Jesus Christ as well. Yes, yeah. yes. And it's very important. I'm glad you're yeah. doing this because... As we move through, I may not uh, point out all the connections, but you should start to see patterns, you know, where words that are used in one spot are being used in another spot. Mm -hmm. And these things are tied together by, by a lot of these recurring expressions. So uh, it's good to pay attention to these things. But we will see the term redeemer used quite a bit in context where we're looking at these persons uh, of the Godhead. So, I mean, uh, hopefully everybody uh, is, is already excited as I am. Uh, the fact that this series is going to be rich and is going to be rich from the Word of God, obviously, but not any just part of the Word of God, the Old Testament exclusively talking about the Trinity. I mean, how often do you share the Trinity from the Old Testament? Sadly, as Anthony mentioned, we tend usually to go to the New Testament to try to defend it, which is, you know, of course, I mean, it makes sense because it's mentioned there more clearly, but that doesn't mean it is not in the Old Testament. This is why when I teach on the Trinity, and I did a, a number of series, by the way, on this, obviously, uh, Anthony's approach is going to be uh, very powerful and helpful uh, as also an add-on to whatever others are teaching. You may come across teaching by uh, Sam Jamon or maybe other people who have dedicated, you know, uh, part of their ministry to explain such a, a rich doctrine. I'm hoping that uh, what a Brother Anthony is going to bring to the table will be even yet another tool to empower you in explaining it Believe it or not, not just the Muslims, but you have Jehovah Witness also that you can deal with. You have Mormons that you may deal with. You have people who are skeptic, you know, about it that you're going to deal with. So don't think this is just for Muslims only. This is from the Word of God. This is a doctrine that is found in the Bible. And I'm hoping that you will stick with us because as we kick off this series starting in the next episode, we'll begin to go through different themes, highlighting the Father, highlighting the person of Christ, highlighting the angel of the Lord highlighting, uh, you know, the, this, the Holy Spirit and so on and so forth. Is there anything else, brother, that you want to add uh, to this introductory uh, episode? No, I just, uh, I, I'm grateful for this opportunity. I thank you. I am looking forward to it. I hope people will uh, stay engaged. I hope they'll listen not only to each episode, but maybe even go back through them because, you, like I said, there's so much material here that some things won't be caught the first time, but if you go back through, you'll exactly. see things you didn't see at first. It's the same thing with reading the Bible just you know, straight through. Uh, you'll notice something the first time through, and then the second time through that you didn't notice the first time, and, and so on and so forth. The Bible's a book that's meant to be studied, not just read. Amen. And, and so I would say the same thing for this series since we're focusing on the Bible. If you go back through it, you'll pick up more information, and it'll be... Uh, more more fruitful for you uh, if you do that. Thank you. And as always, of course, if you're watching this series, that means it is already being released on our YouTube channel, Sierra International. That's C as in Charlie, C-I-R-A International. But also it will be part of our learning platform package on our website, sierrainternational.com. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching. Please like our video. And we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sierra International. And be sure also to click the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we upload new videos into the channel. And finally, I like to prayerfully encourage you to become a patron through Patreon. Your giving is much needed and will enable us to produce more and more of videos like this so that we can publish them on a weekly basis. So thank you in advance.